This video is a tutorial for students of GCSE Chemistry in which we look at how to draw the electron configuration diagrams of the first 20 elements in the periodic table. You're probably already familiar with this model of the atom, which we often refer to as the modern model of the atom or the Bohr model of the atom. It's made up of three subatomic particles called protons, neutrons and electrons. In questions about electron configuration, or it's sometimes referred to as electron arrangement, we're not actually interested in the protons and the neutrons. So rather than drawing that full atom, we would just draw the nucleus as a simple dot, and then we would represent the electrons with either dots or crosses. To find out how many electrons any particular atom has, we can look at the atomic number. And this is going to be the lower of the two numbers on the AQA GCC chemistry periodic table. But for any periodic table, it will be the smaller of the two numbers. Having said that, we're going to start with the first element, hydrogen. And as you can see here, hydrogen actually has the same atomic number as mass number. So we can see that hydrogen has a single electron. And the rule is that we're always going to place electrons as close to the nucleus as we can. So for hydrogen, we're only going to make use of the first shell and we're going to add our first electron to that shell. We can also write a numerical electron arrangement or electron configuration. And at the moment, it's not going to make a huge amount of sense, but we're just going to put a number one in brackets. As we've just mentioned, the number of electrons for any particular atom will be the same as its atomic number. So helium here is going to contain two electrons. And as we've also just mentioned, we're going to place these electrons as close to the nucleus as we can. So because this first shell can contain up to two electrons, we're not going to start a second shell. We're going to continue with this first shell. So the first electron goes exactly where it did for hydrogen. And the second electron also goes into this first shell. And now we can represent our electron configuration by the number two in brackets. And this tells me that I have two electrons in the first shell. Now we're going to move on to lithium, which has three electrons. And so now we're going to start needing to use our second shell because that first shell could only fit two electrons in it. So we place our first two electrons as near to the nucleus as we can in shell one. And then the third electron is going to spill over into the second shell. And this second shell can contain up to eight electrons. Right now, we're only putting one in there because lithium only has three in total. But as we continue, we'll steadily add more and more. We can represent this electron arrangement numerically by putting in brackets two comma one. So that first two shows me that there are two electrons in the first shell. And then the one after the comma shows me that the second shell contains one electron. Now you might be thinking, hang on a second, how am I supposed to remember all of these different numbers and the number of electrons that will fit into the different shells? Well, this is where your periodic table comes in really handy, because actually the patterns that we see in the periodic table are based on the structure of these atoms and how many electrons they have. So if you look in the first period, the first row, there are two elements. And that means that after the first two elements, we're going to need to start a new shell because we can only fit two electrons in that first shell. So then if you look at the second period, the second row, and count up the elements in that, well, there are eight elements. And so that means we can fit eight electrons into that second shell, and then we will need to start a new shell, the third shell. So if we think about beryllium, this is going to have two electrons in the first shell and then two electrons in the second shell. Now it's worth pointing out here that if you need to know how many electrons an element has in its outer shell and you don't have time to draw the full diagram or you don't want to, there is a quick way that you can figure this out. So beryllium in the periodic table belongs here in group two, and that means it must have two electrons in its outer shell. And that will be true for anything in group two. And that's also true for all of the other groups. So if something is in group seven, it must have seven electrons in its outer shell and so on. So we carry on. We've got boron with two electrons in the first shell and three electrons in the second shell, followed by carbon with two electrons in the first shell and four electrons in the second shell. Now, nitrogen is where we see people starting to make mistakes because they always want to start a third shell when they've only put four electrons into this second shell. So just remember that second shell can contain up to eight electrons. And we're going to place these next five electrons that we have in nitrogen, north, south, east, west, and then we're going to start pairing them together. 
So we have two in our first shell and then five in our second shell, making seven in total. Then oxygen with eight electrons in total has two in the first shell and six in the second. So of course it's in group six. While fluorine has two electrons in the first shell and seven electrons in the second shell. So as you can see, there are three pairs and then one electron on its own. And then neon in group zero has two electrons and then eight. So it has this full outer shell. And this is what makes neon so very stable and inert and unreactive because it's a noble gas. So now that we've had eight electrons in our second shell, it must be time to start shell three with sodium, which is going to have two electrons followed by eight electrons, followed by a single electron. And if we look back at period three, that third row, then again, we can see that there are eight elements and therefore we're going to add eight electrons to shell three before we can start shell four. When you get to shell four, you're only ever going to be asked to draw the electron arrangement of potassium, which is in group one, or calcium, which is in group two. And the reason for this is that after calcium, there are some new rules that we're not going to talk about until we get to year 12 and A-level chemistry. So it's not just that they're being kind and saying we'll stop at number 20. It's that these diagrams are not going to work in the same way after element 20. So you can guarantee that that is the last element that you might be asked to draw the electron arrangement for. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you're now feeling more confident in drawing electron arrangement diagrams for the first 20 elements of the periodic table. If you did find this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC chemistry videos coming soon.